The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning and welcome to today's webinar, Ergonomics in the Classroom. Uh, we're delighted that you're with us today. I'm Sue Meyer and I'll be your host today. Um, I want to go over a few of the, as you probably have already mentioned, and we've already gone through this many times for those of you who have attended one of our webinars before, but in order to receive AIA credit or a certificate of participation, um, you will need to watch this webinar in a group environment, which means you need to individually register and log in and log out. And um, this gives us an indication that you were present. All righty, so how do you request these CEUs? Um, we would ask that you email. Um, we'll give you that email address at the very end of the webinar, and there will be a slide that pops up, and uh, we'll give you that information. Um, this is a few slides that we will um, present your way that have to do with our requirements for AIA. Um, as you can see, the course title is Ergonomics in the Classroom. It's shows you the course number and the credit, and of course our speaker today. And we'll flip through this, and you all read the course description when you registered yourself to attend. Um, we do have four learning objectives today, um, learning basic ergonomic principles and how they apply, learning about students in the classroom and ergonomics research, learn about studies on furniture and computer equipment design, and learn more about examples of ergonomics-based solutions. We are also offering local professional development credit, or LPDCs, for any school district personnel who are in attendance on today's webinar. Um, the same requirements um, go for this credit as well. Please wait for the last slide before sending your request for a certificate. And as normal, we are recording our webinar, and this will be posted to the OFDC webinar archive uh, within a couple days um, of the webinar, depending on um, our webmaster and their schedule. Um, but for your review, there is where the webinar archive is located on our website. Today, if you happen to have a question, please use the question feature that should appear on the right side of your screen. Um, responses will be provided at the end of the webinar today. So right now I'd like to take a moment to introduce our, pres our presenter today on ergonomics in the classroom, Dr. Gary Allred, and he is uh, at Ohio State University in SRI Ergonomics Lab. Gary, thank you for coming today and we look forward to your presentation. Also in the background, we have Glenn Rao, planning manager for the commission. So he's, he's waving hello right now. So he'll be here to answer any questions at the end of the presentation that relate to OFCC specifically. Gary? Great. Uh, thank you, Sue, for organizing this and, and Glenn for being here and uh, being my backup for, for other questions that might uh, come up. Um, I'm delighted to be here today to really talk about um, how we can apply ergonomics principles uh, into classroom environments. And so um, there are a number of different topics that I uh, want to cover. The first really is going to be how we can take uh, basic ergonomic principles that we use across many different type of environments and with um, work products and equipment and apply them into environments where uh, students are learning. And um, based upon that, then the next uh, aspect of what I'll be talking about really uh, is a summary of some of the ergonomics related research that um, I have seen uh, conducted that really looks at uh, students in a learning environment and the classroom and um, what's known. Uh, and just to give you a flavor of, of how some of this uh, types of ergonomics knowledge really uh, is applied into the a learning environment. Uh, and then I'll wrap up and talk about the uh, ways in which we can uh, apply ergonomic solutions uh, in a number of different ways to um, improve uh, the, the the learning experience and, and really the entire experience of um, operating and uh, functioning within uh, a, a classroom uh, in a learning environment and a school system. So if we take a step back and really look at uh, what ergonomics is, 
the first thing that um, we could do is look at basic definitions of ergonomics. And so really at its, at its basic sense, um, ergonomics is really the laws or the science of work. And work isn't, uh, don't think of work as this is what I get paid to do necessarily, but uh, exerting effort. Uh, and the exertion of effort might be physical effort, uh, it might be cognitive effort or mental effort. And uh, so in that way, it's, it's relatively broad in ways in which we can apply this ergonomics knowledge. If we go a little bit more specifically uh, in terms of an ergonomics definition, it's obviously an applied uh, type science where we're really looking at arranging or designing things that people use, uh, what they interact with for a number of different uh, purposes, not only for safety, but efficiency. And I think um, more importantly for uh, the nature of this webinar is for uh, improvements in attention, reductions in um, and, you know, discomfort, you know, increases in learning ability. Uh, and you'll see as we go along how all of those really get integrated within many of the, the principles and the uh, ways in which, you know, this type of knowledge can be applied in the school system. And so, uh, admittedly, a lot of the work that, that I do in ergonomics is more in industrial environments, though, um, as I mentioned, there's a whole host of ways in which these principles can be applied into uh, school systems. And so if we then do that, um, really ergonomics is designing work and equipment uh, around people. So if we take that definition and um, apply it to those individuals or people that we're wanting to design for, obviously uh, it's students uh, or it's the educators who are uh, working with the students. Uh, the next aspect of that are uh, the arrangement of uh, things, equipment, uh, environments in which um, these students and educators are functioning. So we, we look at it in that respect. And the next part of it really is that interaction. What is the impact of the nature of um, the, the, the students who are doing this work, using equipment in environments, and how efficient or effective is that, that interaction. We know the action is in the interaction, and so it's important that we really take into account all these different aspects that can really impact um, that interaction um, for, as I mentioned, a number of different types of um, outcomes, whether it's you know safety, efficiency, um, uh, learning ability, reduction in physical discomfort, mental alertness. There's a whole host of different known benefits that you get from the application of these types of um, uh, principles. So um, I also admit that you know I'm I'm no expert when it comes to uh, the OFCC and, and all of the good work that you do, but I did go online and and look to see. Uh, what the goals are of the organization. And as you can see there, uh, one is to build quality facilities that promote excellence, to facilitate projects that are well planned on time, on budget, um, to embrace innovation, encourage continuous growth, cultivate partnerships for success. So I think that those goals really work really well with what we do and what our objectives are in, in ergonomics. Um, we can apply these principles and we know that with this application comes more excellence in terms of uh, a better uh, experience uh, among uh, students, among teachers. Um, when we think about promoting excellence, I think of, you know, test scores and, and the, the user experience in, in building environments. Uh, so, you know, there are a number of different ways in which uh, there's a link, I think, between these ergonomic principles and, and excellence. Uh, if we think about innovation, um, ergonomics is on the cutting edge of a lot of equipment design in terms of understanding how it can benefit uh, uh, people in a number of different types of environments. And so I think that really integrates nicely with the goals of, of this organization. Uh, and, and along those lines, I think it also then uh, links to the, the partnership of really understanding all of the different 
types of expertise that come into play to really have a, a creative um, a collaboration that really produces uh, a successful environment in which students can learn. So the, getting back into some of the specifics about what we look at uh, in ergonomics, there are a whole host of different types of e exposures, if you will, uh, things that might be a part of um, an ergonomic assessment or an ergonomic design of, uh, of equipment, of an environment in which people are operating. And so we look at a number of things like how much physical effort does, does it take to do work? How um, are, what are the working positions or operating positions uh, of people doing that work? And, and so um, this is a list of a number of different one of those, but I think that they all relate to uh, learning environments. For example, uh, with, with FORCE, uh, there has been a lot of work done, and I'll elaborate a little bit more on backpack design and what we know about how students carrying backpacks can have an impact on them. Uh, the next one is the, the postures in which uh, students are doing work in. That is, how are they interacting with the, the tools and equipment that they have in their uh, workplace because we know that the more deviated or awkward positions are when students are uh, studying or working on a computer um, takes more uh, physical effort and that can have an impact in a number of different ways. Uh, doing things repetitively. Uh, more uh, learning environments involve technology, involve use of computers, tablets, and other devices and the, the body can recover from doing repetitive work, but there's a process by which we have to uh, make sure that that doesn't exceed really what um, students who you know, are developing uh, in terms of their um, physical abilities uh, can tolerate. Uh, another thing that we look at is um, recovery and what the impact is of staying in the same kind of position for a long period of time because we know that that can fatigue uh, individuals. And so if we think about the postures in which students are taking tests, for example, for long periods of time, that that, that can be fatiguing, uh, it can be irritating, and that can impact the, the ability of, of the mental work to, or the, the test taking uh, ability to be impacted. Um, another one would be uh, another thing related to how well the, the body recovers from whatever kind of work is being asked, asked of it. And so when it comes to how equipment is designed, how furniture is designed, how uh, computers are um, oriented uh, and positioned on desktops, um, what kind of writing instruments that people use. Uh, and these students um, are using can have an impact on uh, um, some fine motor skills, uh, fatigue ability to do work um, on computers or at desks, so those type of things. Um, and then we also have to take into account the environment in which uh, work is taking place. And so that could relate to heat or cold. Uh, certainly, um, I can relate to that being uh, raised in a, in a small rural uh, school system that didn't have very good uh, functioning heaters and, and being really cold in the winter that, you know, I was focused on trying to keep warm rather than the, the information that the teacher was providing. Um, I believe uh, because of the unseasonably warm temperatures we've had here in central Ohio, um, there were a few school systems that uh, left out early uh, in the day because of, of the heat and they weren't uh, air conditioned. And so, you know, that can have an impact on the learning experience of, of students. Uh, we also know something that's probably a little bit more subtle is, you know, the impact of where furniture and equipment is located within an environment uh, related to light sources, whether that's uh, from um, lighting built within the uh, school, in the building itself, whether it's positioning of the, um, the work or in this example with computers related to where they're located with, with uh, windows. And that can impact uh, glare, it can impact the resolution of what students are looking at, 
that can have an impact on the clarity, uh, the ability to correctly make decisions or interpret that information, uh, the eye strain on the students who are increasingly doing computer work. So there's a whole host of these type of environmental issues that really impact this nature of the work, if you will, that uh, uh, students are doing in the classroom. So uh, what I want to do is also then talk a little bit about what some ergonomics research related to some of these issues that I've been talking about um, have been telling us. And so I will go through uh, a few of those. Um, unlike in a lot of industrial environments, when I'm applying ergonomics work, you know, we're really wanting to reduce injuries uh, so that you know, they're, they're obviously quite costly. And so that's often the goal in those kind of environments. I think that when we're applying um, ergonomics principles in the classroom, it doesn't rise to that level necessarily, but it does or has the potential really to relate to the, the physical comfort or discomfort that, that students might have working in that environment. And so there have been some studies that have uh, found that uh, a fair number of uh, students, both in the elementary and the college levels, report um, higher rates of musculoskeletal discomfort than we see in the general population. Uh, that could be um, back soreness, shoulder soreness, soreness um, elbow or hand and wrist uh, discomfort. And part of that, probably uh, at least what the literature tends to indicate is uh, use of the computer and not necessarily just using a computer, but how it's used. Um, what's the positioning of the students using the computers? Uh, so we see that there's uh, a high amount of prevalence of some kind of physical discomfort um, as a, a first indication that there's opportunities here from the ability of, to integrate ergonomics uh, within school system designs, within um, uh, equipment, furniture designs. I think a little bit more specifically, uh, some of the, the research that really has looked at at furniture uh, for, for students in classrooms, there have been uh, some studies that have looked at um, the, the sizes of students as they grow uh, in elementary uh, into high school and found that there was uh, quite a large uh, percentage of furniture that didn't really match the, the sizes of the students who are, are sitting in it. Uh, and as a result, in those cases where the furniture didn't really match well with the size of the, of the students, there were uh, pretty significant reports of low back pain, of uh, pain in the um, upper back or the neck region, uh, in the upper back as well. And uh, there were reports in this particular study that girls reported more physical discomfort than uh, did boys. Um, uh, another study looked a little bit more quantitatively at a number of different types of uh, desk and chair combinations. And uh, you can see that there's a variety of designs that this particular study looked at um, that was really commercially available. Some of it had some adjustability features um, in it uh, as it exists uh, in the furniture market. And uh, there were more quantitative studies done, uh, uh, research done in this particular study that really looked at a variety of different um, postures in terms of the back and the shoulders and the arms and found that there was this large mismatch um, between a lot of students who were various sizes in relationship to how they were sitting and, and in this uh, different kind of furniture. And so this is uh, an example of some of the, the work that was done for this particular research. Um, the conclusions here were that a lot of the, the students in terms of their physical sizes sat on chairs that were not right for them they were either too high or too low. Uh, I'll explain a little bit more about what that means. Uh, or sitting at, uh, at desks that were, that were too high. And so these particular ones um, are what these researchers have found that either put um, lower amounts of, of stress or reported discomfort on, on the backs of, of students or ones that were rated as mo more uncomfortable. Uh, so there was some conclusions on, on that study. Um, if we go further to, to another 
study that really looked at computer use. So now we're transitioning really from some of the, the furniture related ergonomics research to actual use of, uh, of students. Uh, certainly, uh, and this is back, gosh, um, almost eight years now that students uh, were found to spend more time than working professionals on computers. They were found to work uh, for longer periods of uninterrupted uh, time. And they also had more uh, reports of discomfort in their upper body. That would be their upper back, their shoulders, uh, perhaps their, their elbows or, or hands and wrists. And so um, certainly I believe that that trend is going to continue uh, in terms of more uh, interactions with, with computers in, in the school system. And so, you know, this is really comparable to what we're seeing, you know, across many different uh, uh, types of, of work environments. Another issue that that we've seen in the um, in the classroom really is that there may be a lot of um, you know nice design or you know a, a new school system that has a new building, but um, there may not be funds for good uh, or proper furniture that goes into that building, or you know uh, uh, an existing school gets. A, um, a grant and get some more computers, but where do they put those computers? Well, they put them on existing desks that they have, or they pull up whatever chairs or seats that they have. Uh, these are some examples of, you know, some, some technology, some computers that are just randomly placed on desktops or having students use stools. Well, that really is going to impact how uh, properly supported the students can be when they're doing that work. Um, are they able to really work in those positions for long periods of time? Uh, so that can have an impact on discomfort, on fatigue, on concentration. Uh, so, you know, that's another aspect of this whole ergonomic system that, that I've been talking about. Uh, in many cases, too, there's uh, computers that are not really designed for smaller individuals, for, uh, uh, for students. So here we have a lot of equipment that uh, really is designed for adults to use that's being used by students. And with that mismatch comes the potential for uh, a variety of different types of um, ergonomics related problems like um, the postures in which students are, are working at and uh, how well they're again are supported doing this kind of work. Uh, some of the research done in this area um, had found that uh, many of the, the combinations of, of students of different sizes uh, working on uh, at desks at, at different tables were not well matched. And so this is an example uh, of another study that really looked at um, a, a tall student who couldn't really adjust the, um, the desks and, and the tables to really be either comfortable to sit in or to be able to um, work effectively at, at a table. And so these type of mismatches between the, the students and their sizes and the, the sizes of the furniture can really have an impact on fatigue due to postures that aren't as um, um, favorable as they could be. Um, and because of that, it could translate to, as these researchers found, um, some more negative performance uh, in terms of um, um, student grades or learning of those uh, type of outcomes. Um, getting at what I, I was talking about uh, a little bit earlier with students spending a lot more time at, at computers, uh, we know that the, the chair or the sitting surface on which students or anyone really is sitting on has an impact on their back. We know that when people sit, they put more pressure, put more load on their spines than when they stand. And that's even exacerbated when uh, students are sitting on stools or in chairs where their feet aren't supported. That tends to rotate the hips, tends to put uh, uh, reduce the lumbar curve in the low back, and puts more pressure on the back. So there's going to be more uh, discomfort in the short term from those more unsupported type um, working positions at a computer. And again, that can impact the performance of, of the students as they 
um, comparison to when there is a better match where you know, the students are well supported in a seat or in a stool uh, as they're using a computer or sitting at a desk. Um, another thing that might be a little bit tangential to some of you, but really has been the subject of some uh, research really has to do with, with backpacks. And I honestly was surprised when I looked into this to see just how many um, children are treated for backpack related injuries, uh, both in emergency rooms and just um, in terms of general office visits. It was over 14,000 students.